Sunday morning, about to have this mimosa. Yep, awesome. Sunday morning. <laughs> we ain't got no champagne glasses, but we're still gonna yeah. drink mimosa. I don't know where we put it. I it up. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> So with this 2009 Civic Si, um, most common issues with the Hondas, just like my nephew's Element, the valve clearances get tight, but before we get started, I'm probably gonna have to see what the map reading, reading, and then go from there. Let's see what we got going on. The connector, I forgot. Come on, man. Just get in there. I don't feel like sticking my head all the way under this dash. Curvy that way. Curvy that way. There we go. Too rich. System too rich code. So right now, before the valve adjustment, let's look at this map reading. So right now, vehicle's warmed up, idle, 7.6. So let's see if this thing changes after the valve adjustment. What's up here last time? A little bit of debris in there. So let's see what's going on in the kitchen. bad it's not dirty the only thing about this valve adjustment see the valve cover <laughs> it's right underneath the cowl we're gonna have to remove the cowl which isn't too much of a big deal but since it is plastic and you know how plastic is sometimes clips and all that break that's the only thing I don't like go ahead put the fans on here and cool the car down a little bit and have at it. Oh, you know. Still got the Laker shirt on. I sweaty earlier, now the sweat dried off. But it's cool, cause we're gonna be sweating again. Now baby girl wants to go in her swimming pool, but don't really want to put it in her driveway. I'm gonna see if this thing can fit in the patio upstairs. See what's up. Okay, looks like it fits here in the patio. I'm gonna have to bring the hose up here. Had to wrap the hose up here so we could fill this up. Okay, while the pool fills up, we'll be over here taking off the windshield cowl and go at it. Okay, for this, I'm gonna have to turn on the car, key on engine off, move the wiper arms out the way like that look at the cowl see how there's already a gap on there and we didn't even remove it yet that's why I'm not too fond of removing these so but we have to remove it so I can get this valve cover off let's see if I can start taking off the rest of the cowl all right let's see what we got here and these plastic trim poppers gotta be careful because windshield is glass folks oh yeah just like butter sure glad I picked up these plastic panel poppers made in China from the hub buffet harbor freight little inside joke this guy Thomas from Pan here in San Diego he was telling the homie's wife where he could get a jack he's all oh, you got to get that from the hub buffet and she was like what hub buffet what what buffet <laughs> Oh man, when I heard that story, Ha Buffet. So every time I see Harbor Freight, I think of Ha Buffet. All right, panel is out, but I don't really wanna, well, it's not a big deal if I do, but disconnect the wiper windshield hose, if you will. Uh, you know what, it's just right there. I might disconnect this. Yep, just like that one video with uh, Reggie's Integra. Yes, folks. That sweat rolling down my arms like a gallon of water. 
All right, weapon of choice, Deep 10, Craftsman, 10 millimeter. Mated with a snap-on, I believe, 12 inch extension with my handy dandy Harbor Harbor Freight magnet. It's all right, because we have a magnet. Yes, we do. That's what's up. So just gotta remove those, those, those. You guys get the idea. I believe all the bolts are zapped off or not. Is there one more? Or is it just on there? All right. You're messing with me, man. Shoo. Okay, look at that. Now we can see the valve cover. And now we can start zapping away and remove this thing. But I wanted to show you guys something. Yep. Sweaty ass hands. Yes, sir. Vlogging in progress. Vlogging in progress. What's going on? How's it going? Careful, you might slip. All right, vlogging in progress. This video will be in there. No, no editing involved. No thanks. It's hot in the garage, girl. I think when I'm done taking the valve cover off, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump in this pool. Shoot. That's what's up. Okay, just want to remove this valve cover gasket. Go ham on it, but let's not tighten it. Let's loosen it. And then once I get the valve cover gasket off, I'll probably jump in the baby girl swimming pool because it's so hot. Oil packs. Sorry for the noise. I guess we got a little water pressure around here. I think that thing is like a 50 gallon pool. Maybe 100 gallons. Or maybe I shouldn't fill it up too much because I don't know how much weight that patio is supposed to hold up. Anyhow. Next is spark plugs. Uh, I'll move that later. Previous owner and the homie, the current owner, they take care of their cars. Looks clean in there. All right, remove it. Three spark plugs so far. Here's number one cylinder spark plug. Yep, these spark plugs probably have never been changed yet, but it's all right. It's recommended at 105 and it's a little bit over. I'm gonna turn up the water for a little bit, okay? Cause in the video, they could hear it go, Ooh. is that cool? All right, just for a second. Otherwise, just hear this background noise going. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Let's 
see if this will work. Ooh, it's a 17, folks. Do I have a 17 gear wrench? Yes, I do. Let's see if we could line this mug up. Let's see if this thing cooperates. on there then make sure I'm not in gear so I have to do it the traditional way because that thing is a pain to spin normally if this thing had power steering I could do it any power steering Ooh. all right as far as the intake and exhaust so <clears throat> this is proof right here you can't believe what the map reading is reading because I could barely stick my now my gauge is stuck I got it in there but it's not moving uh, there you go um, yep oh geez Woo. so number one has tight valve clearances we're gonna proceed with doing the valve clearance adjustments on all the valves so if you look here on the intake He's on the looser side. You wear that have loosed and tight because tight valves could burn exhaust valves. Um, usually it's the exhaust valves that get tight. Intake, not so much. So, weapon of choice, Matco 10 millimeter valve adjustment tool with sears slash craftsman feeler gauges let's have at it on the exhaust side he had one tight valve and one loose valve so they weren't both tight so this one they could actually move the feeler gauge but it's on the loose side because there's no drag what you want is you you want there to be a slight drag not too much drag and you don't want no drag you need slight drag Okay, before I get you guys on a time lapse, this is what the perfect drag to me is. You see how it has a little bit of drag and you can actually see the oil marks and then the feeler gauge is skipping. See how it has that little skip to it? That's what you want in valve clearance. You find the spec that it calls for, and this is what you want. See? So this is what loose valves look like. See how there's no drag? So I adjusted this one. Basically what I was doing was, while I had the feeler gauge in there, I was tightening. First you loosen up the lock nut, then you adjust it with the, the built-in screwdriver. And then from there, you, you keep adjusting until you get the right feel, when you get the right drag. So if you look, you could even hear it. Do the little skip. So both intake valves are set to spec. Good to go. Just gotta take another glove bait. Break, it's still hot in this garage. So as you can see, it's pretty humid in this garage. Pretty humid today, so it's hot. So with that said, I'm like, take a break. Um, probably go shoot some hoops with the homies real quick. Probably a win or two games, to be honest with you. Let's see what the wifey has to say about that. Thank you.
Okay, we're back at it after a five hour break. So since this is a four cylinder, a cylinder will, er will fire every quarter turn of the camshaft sprocket or gear. Right now we're on top dead center. There's two lines right here that should line up. So we're on number one cylinder. Now we turn this a quarter turn, this line will be up here. So now we'll be on number three cylinder. Firing order on this is one, three, four, two. So we're gonna go to number two next. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it. So before I rotate it, if you're looking at the cam lobes, the middle cam lobes, which is the VTEC, if you're looking at it, since we're at number one, see how the lobes are kind of pointing at each other. So when we go to number three cylinder, which is the next cylinder to fire, it should look the same way. Right now it's not, cause it's not rotated yet. So it should look something like this. See how this is pointing this way? That's the exhaust and the intake is pointing that way. So that's what number three should look like. Okay, so I just rotated the cam sprocket, cam gear quarter turn now this mark that was down here is up here so now we're on number three cylinder remember i was talking about the cam lobes pointing towards each other for the vtec that's about how it should be since we're in that cylinder that we're gonna adjust the clearance on so exhaust valve number three was actually good um there was no tight valves but the intake is on the loose side no drag so i'm gonna adjust that so pretty much that's how we're gonna be doing it for each cylinder until we're done with all four so yeah i'll probably have you guys on the time lapse now that way you guys won't get too bored okay I had to stop the time lapse because my feeler gauge decided it wanted to fall into this crevice and it's into the fender line right now. Yep, I hear it, I'm banging on it, but just can't get it out. <sighs> finding my feeler gauge anyway um number four uh slightly loose on one and the other one didn't need adjustment um intakes uh valve clearance was loose as usual on most of these k series hondas if you will so now we're left with the last cylinder number two let's see what we find there so i gotta rotate this so we're this there's a line here so this line needs to be pointing down this line needs to be pointing up straight with the head so the head is tilted right now that's just how it's set up with the motor in the car so let's see what we find out all right we're at the last cylinder the clearance feel like with the feeler gauge. Interesting. Out of all these, the tightest valve was number one on this side. Everything else, some was slightly tight, but man, I don't know, maybe one tight valve can cause a rich condition. Or, I don't know. So, go ahead and adjust this, since this is super loose, there's no drag here. Alright, let's continue. We might have to do a fuel pressure test eventually if this thing holds back up after this valve adjustment. I mean, this thing is due for a valve adjustment anyway, as recommended by Honda at 105,000 miles. And the spark plugs have never been changed. So that's why we're doing this and hoping we could kill two birds with one stone. Okay, valves have been adjusted back to factory spec. Uh, most of the intakes were pretty much loose. 
um, the number one uh, cylinder had one tight valve out of all the others. The others were a little bit on the loose end, some were dead on, so. All right, we'll continue. Um, start putting this valve cover gasket and spark plug tube O-rings. But first, we need a little intermission because these gloves are soaked with sweat. And I need a water break to hydrate back up. Yeah, pretty disgusting, right? All right, here's the parts. Um, gonna be changing out. Spark plug tube O-rings, um, valve cover gasket, um, and the spark plugs. Didn't need to change his uh, grommets because they look in pretty, they're looking in pretty good shape right now. So we're good there. All right, now that the spark plug tube O-rings are on and the valve cover gasket is on, we're gonna be putting Honda bondage, Honda bond on this corner right here. And then the back corner, right, uh, where is it? right there, right there, and back there. Um, reason why, these are the four points where it could leak, because right here, if you look, the timing cover is made it with the head. That's not always perfect. I've seen them, you could actually, this one's actually perfect, but um, I've seen one where they're a little off and that could cause a leak. And then right there, that's the area where the, the gasket doesn't really seal well. Um, so you need that Honda bond to be there for, for assurance. So we'll have at it, put the valve cover on, start putting the spark plugs in and put back the windshield cowl. So just like at the factory, sorry, I got the sleepy voice going on, man. It's late, but we got to get her done. Um, so just like the factory, you don't need to put too much, just a dab. Yeah. Just a dab back here. And same goes for this corner right here. And then the corner back there, but you get the idea. Okay, new versus old spark plug. So this spark plug looks like it's the original, has 100, 10,000 miles on it. See how the end of the electrode is a little bit tapered or worn, however you want to say. And then if you look at the new one, nice and straight. So the plugs from the dealer are pre gapped. Um, it's up to you if you want to double check. I usually don't. You always want to check, make sure the porcelain is not cracked, and you only hope like you know nobody dropped them. But it has collars, so it protects it. It protects it. This is the little collar I'm talking about. Protects it. So if you were to buy aftermarket Denso plugs, those you definitely would have to gap because they're not made for a specific vehicle. It's kind of universal. All right, more time-lapse. Okay, let's see, gotta bring you over here real quick. Just wanna make sure none of the gaskets got pinched out or came out of the grooves. So. 
Valve adjustments done on this 2009 Civic Si. Um, there was only one type valve, so um, I'm hoping that was the culprit causing the uh, rich condition. Um, so we'll find out. Um, I won't be able to start this car up until tomorrow because I want to be courteous to the neighbors. Um, the homie Lorenz has an exhaust system and it's. Uh, sounds pretty nice so all right i'll see you in the morning one more thing before i go yep that's how hot it is okay it's the next next day here in the morning um he also complained about he's always so complaining about a weird noise after the car is sit but every time he brings it over I could never hear it so the car sat let's see what we hear on startup I think I heard it slightly it might be his drive belt I'm guessing but couldn't really quite hear it all right the car is warming up um, the map reading is high but it's still warming up um, but I failed to mention yesterday that the short-term fuel trim and long-term fuel trim they were all extremely high so right now on the cold startup, it's actually, it, it dropped significant from last time. So it might've been just the valve adjustment. Um, Cause if not, he'd, he'd probably aim towards a uh, MAF sensor. So looks like we might be good on this one. Um, we'll follow up on this. Jolly be failing me with their chicken sandwich. Had to hit up Popeyes real quick. Look at that, less than five minutes wait. Jolly B, you'll be at the line for like 15, 30 minutes. And then sorry, we're out of your chicken sandwich. Terrible. Just realized this is my lunch for today. It's already like 3.21, late lunch. It has its own little baggy waggy. Pretty cool. More baggy waggy. Anyway, hope you guys had a good one. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace.